great to see you all here. I know the weather is a little bit different today, but we're all nice and warm inside our new building, and it's always a great day to worship the Lord. Would you please stand, and let's celebrate the fact that Jesus is going to come again.
Interesting way to start church service, isn't it? <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Prairie Bible Church. My name is Tom Hughes. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to be here this morning. If you are a guest or a visitor, we try to have a little bit of drama sometimes. So that's a great way to start it off, isn't it? And remember that we are here all as sinners. We are all as brothers and sisters in Christ, just trying to get better, to know Jesus and know God and how we can heal together. I'm going to start off with that, a soul detox. It's kind of a little promo video of the, the series we're going to go through in the next month. Hopefully those of you that are regulars have heard about it a lot. The book is back in the back table. Um, it's a study guide that we're going to go through together as a church. Pastor Craig's going to be preaching on it the next five weeks. And it is, again, about ridding our body of sin to kind of cleanse us and get us ready for helping to save the world, if you will, one person at a time. We hope that you will all be able to pick up a book, take it with you. There's plenty of bo- uh, books back there, a box of bo- books, to be able to study along with us and then to be able to uh, talk about it and share it amongst uh, smaller groups too. So if you are not in a life group that's maybe studying the book and want to, there's sign-ups in the back as well to be able to just share that and talk about it in a small group. Uh, Pastor Craig and Tyler and Alicia Chemlin are helping to lead a group on Wednesday nights. If you don't have a group that you want to be in, just come here at 630 Wednesday nights, and you can be a part of that group just to study and learn more about it. Uh, There's videos to go with it. Are the videos, Craig, half as good as the promo video? Well, okay, but there's going to be some good videos to go with it, and hope that we all get a chance to study this together and learn more about where we are in our place. Um, Again, just want to welcome everyone to church. Prairie Bible Church truly believes it is our mission to help people grow in their faith by being a simple, an authentic representation of Jesus' love today, tomorrow, and every day. And hope that you can just welcome into that and be able to spread that joy in the world as we go forward. There's three things, uh, Pastor Craig reminded us even last week, that three of many things that we are called as Christians to do, but three purposes we like to do. Worship, discipleship, and service. And we, we get a chance to come together and worship on Sunday mornings, it's awesome. Although we can worship and should be worshiping Jesus every day and every minute, but we're thrilled that you're able to be here with us this morning. Um, thank you for the chance to be able to spread out and yet still be able to be in the building. As Jesse said, it's kind of nice to come into the building now. It'd be a little tough to be on the farm this morning maybe, wouldn't it? <laughs> it kind of reminded me of what I know many of you know my daughter Sarah. The first thing she said to me this morning when she woke up, Merry Christmas! <laughs> so it is good to be in the building but to be able to worship together, and we're thrilled that we can spread out and still be able to do it safely and be able to come together. Um, I mentioned the book study and hope that you can all do that from a discipleship standpoint, to study and to learn more about Jesus. The other thing I want to mention is just service and remind us how we can all be serving uh, our Christ and our Lord in our communities in many different ways. And one of the ways that Pray Bible Church is serving in a lot of different ways, but one of them is our Miracle Barn and Back. As a reminder that all financial giving that is done to Prairie Bible Church, we take the first 10% and then give into our community as well as a way that we as a church can be serving our community and remind you that that is a way that we can hopefully spread a little bit of that joy here in our local communities and places that need it. If you would, uh, join me in an opening prayer as we start our service this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. We thank you for this place, this nice warm place that we can come in this morning We also thank you for the the rain and the joy that maybe that snow brought to many people this morning as well. I thank you, Lord, just for your love and the peace that comes from knowing you. From the challenges on this world, yet you have bring us that joy and that peace, and we can come in and celebrate you, celebrate how great you are and how great you are to us each and every day. Lord, we pray for the stress that's going on in the world. And there's no other way to talk about it but stress and anxiety and challenges and concerns. 2020 will definitely go down in our history books in a challenging, unique way. But yet, Lord, we just pray that you would take these opportunities. We know that you can use anything for good. And we've heard so many of the good stories that have come out of 2020. People helping one another, supporting one another, the miracles that have come from health healing, and opportunities. Lord, and I just pray that, that you would continue to use these challenges, this virus, this riots, this upcoming election, and the divisiveness that it is, Lord, that you would just allow it to heal our earth, that you would take these things for good. I pray for each person that's here this morning and those that are watching and being a part of us online as well, that you would remind us of that, remind us of your good and your grace 
and your love. And that you can use this and use us. And I pray, Lord, that as we leave this place today, that you would use each and every one of us for your purpose, for your reasons, for your love in this world, to just shed a little bit of your light. Lord, I pray for our worship service this morning, for the songs that we've already kicked off with, and the, the awesome music that we can raise up and thank you for bringing our King and our Savior. We pray that it just brings joyful noise to your ears. I pray for the message that we'll hear, that it truly can fill our hearts and remind us of what we are called here and our purpose here on earth, to spread and to share your message. And I pray for your blessing upon our book study this coming month. Lord, that you would let this be a perfect timing for those of us that need it. That it's a perfect position, the perfect timing in our life to hear this message that's coming from the book. That you would gather us into small groups, that you would build relationships with uh, that book and through us that we could then continue on as we continue to study and to learn more about you and to become in relationship with you closer and closer. I pray, Lord, that it would just be your timing and your way for our church to grow as we welcome in more. And as I pray every week, Lord, I pray that you would take the energy, the spirit, and the love from this place, that you'd fill us up and then send us out into this world this coming week that we can share a little bit of your light in our earth. We ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I've got some great news for you this morning, and it's that God loves you very, very much. If you haven't heard that enough this year, I just want to reaffirm that God loves you. Scripture says that he's numbered every hair on your head. Scripture says that he cares for the sparrow and that he cares for you even more than just some bird. You are so much more to him. And um, he's perfect in all of his ways, and all his ways are directed toward making sure we have everything that we need. And he knows what we need before we say a word. So that's what we're going to sing together this morning. Would you please stand if you're able and join us? He's a good father.
perfect and on that same line that he's a good father our response to him being a good father is exuberant praise and the psalms especially encourage us to praise God in this way fairly often and so I provided a scripture for this morning Um, hopefully it'll be up on the screen behind me but I encourage you to read along with me and let's uh let's read this like we mean it like We are supposed to make a joyful noise to the Lord because he is so good to us. So I'll be reading from Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. It says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And we are that generation. He is extending that faithfulness and his love is deep. So let's sing together.
Thank you. You may be seated. Oh, it's so good to see all you guys. I've been gone for two weeks, and I missed you guys. Good morning, Cameron. Awesome. Come on up. We have plenty of room for everybody. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, good, good, good. Now, I brought my bag, and oftentimes I have really fun things in my bag. We typically, in our time together now, we talk about what we're studying in Kids Life Group, but today I'm going to take a little departure. I'm taking a back road, and I'm going to share a little bit about what our moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandparents and friends and neighbors are going to learn about with Pastor Craig today. So I ha I'll get my things out of the bag, and let's see if we can piece together what we might be talking about. So I brought chips. Now, these things are all related, and I want you guys to help me figure out how they're all related. So I brought chips. I brought pickles. Anybody like pickles here? Oh, lots of hands. Yes, pickles. And then I brought a box of mac and cheese. Yeah, mac and cheese. We have a mac and cheese fan too. What are all these things? They all have something in common besides you guys loving them and me finding them in my pantry. What else? Mr. Lyric, what do you think? They're food. They are food. Absolutely, they're food. Can I tell you a little something special I want to tell you about these? Each and every one of these have a large quantity of salt in them. These are all salty things. <laughs> we love salt. We love salt. They are fantastic salty things. And let's think about what they would taste like if they did not have salt. Okay, our chips with no salt. What would those be like? Gross. Plain potatoes. Like nothing going on. Okay, our pickles without salt. Again, kind of funky. They'd just be a cucumber. Eh, nope, not up for that. Our mac and cheese without salt. Ugh, it's just plain pasta, bland. Thank you, Cayenne. Good word. So all these things have salt, and all that salt makes them yummy and tasty and wants to, <laughs> makes us want to have more. So now I'm going to loop that into Jesus. Salt and Jesus. Okay, how's this work? So, Jesus told us to be the salt of the earth. Now, hmm, that makes me think. What did we learn? Salt gives these things beautiful flavor. And salt makes them taste delicious. Just like when we are salt. So, Lyric's going to be salt. Kale and Gold Boyd are going to be salt. Cameron's going to be salt. We add flavor to this world. Because there's a lot of bitterness, especially now, and darkness, and questions, and people don't quite know what's going on. But you guys do, because you know the whole story. Who came to save you? Jesus. Yes, he tells us that in the Bible, that we're sinners, but he came to save us. And so we have that in our, in our knowledge, and we can share that with other people that are lost. We can give flavor and joy to this world when we are the salt everywhere we go. So we share the gospel, and we share hope when we use um, this opportunity. Every time you have a chance to talk with someone or to um, play with someone or to learn with someone, we can share. We can be salt, and we can share the beautifulness that is Jesus Christ. Can you guys pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you give each and every one of us to know you more. You show us and share your love. And we just ask, Lord, that you make us your salt out in the world. May we share that love that you gave us because there's hope. There's hope way beyond right now. There's hope for eternity, and it's with you. And we celebrate that. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Well, we'd like to have uh, Pastor Craig and Lisa and Jesse and Stacia to come up front. Of course, you got to keep socially distanced from us here, so we'll stand off to one side. <laughs> and while they're coming up, um, just wanted to let you know, my name is Mark Steffens, for those of you that may not know me, and I'm the chair of the Admin Council. And this is Cheryl Lehman, who's the chair of our ministry board. And we just want to take the occasion this morning um, to really express our gratitude to Pastor Craig and, and to Jesse. Um, many of you may know October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so we thought it was quite appropriate for us to do this. It's actually the third anniversary um, of Prairie Bible Church, so I think that deserves a round of applause. Th this week was when we had our very first prayer service out in the barn with, uh, I think there was 33 people there, and, you know, during that time, God's continued to open the doors for us, um, where we've come from you know, the barn to outgrowing that in, in January, um, inviting Pastor Craig to be part of our ministry, um, to become our full-time pastor, moving on from there into the school, and Jesse and Stacia um, joining us as, as our worship pastor. Then we went through uh, at Prairie Hill, obviously, when the pandemic hit, we went virtual, and then we went back out to the barn, and then we finally came here. So it's been quite a, quite a journey. Um, and Craig and Jesse have just been phenomenal leading us through that, um, you know, through, it's, it's tough enough being a pastor, and going through the last year, I can't imagine all the, all the different things that, you know, they've, they've accomplished. So we just want to give them a big um, appreciation, big round of applause for everything they've done for us. Now, normally, we'd, we'd take and uh, all come up and lay our hands on them, but since we can't do that this year, um, I'd like to just offer a short prayer, and if you just reach out your, your um, arms to them, and, and we'll have a short prayer for them. Lord, we thank you for bringing Pastor Craig and Jesse to Prairie Bible Church. Thank you for the many gifts they display every day during the week, and especially on Sunday mornings, to help us to worship you and to help us to grow our Christian faith. Please help us to remember the daily struggles they face, all the stress they endure, and how they continue to serve us in everything they do in your name. We ask that you continue to strengthen and bless them in their leadership of Prairie Bible Church, and we thank you for the many blessings that you have brought on us. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, everybody, for that. I really appreciate it. I remember uh, when they first, it's, I've been in ministry long enough that uh, they didn't used to have Pastor Appreciation Month, and um, I remember for the first few years of my ministry, they, um, when they did, nobody recognized that they did, and, and, but you guys have been so good at that, and I thank you for loving us and and blessing us the way you do because it, it makes a huge difference to uh, being in the ministry. Jesse and I meet um, on Mondays and we often talk about uh, uh, just what it means to kind of live in a glass house, right? And uh, how odd it is. I didn't grow up going to church, so I didn't have any idea what the pastor's life was before I actually became a pastor. And when I became a pastor, I'm going, oh my gosh, this is different. And, uh, uh, there were days over the last 30 years or so when I thought, I'm not sure if I'm cut out for this. And then um, I have days like today when y'all show us love and appreciation. It makes a huge difference, so thank you for that. Um, if you would, I invite you to bow your head as we kind of move into the message time. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. And I can hear the brush of angels' wings. And I see glory on each face. 
Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Lord Jesus, you are surely here. The fact of the matter is you are surely wherever we are. But it, there's something beautiful, something mystical, and something powerful that occurs when the people of God gather to praise God. And that's why we have come to this place today, to worship you and to praise you because you deserve it, but also to bask in your glory and to, to be made into your image, knowing and understanding that because of you, we have a purpose. Um, as I alluded to earlier, Lord, I, I, I know what it was like to live life without purpose, without you, and it was dark. And now I know what it is like to live life with purpose. And there's light. And I thank you, Lord, for purpose. I thank you for the privilege to get to be the church, to get to be the body of Christ with brothers and sisters such as this. We, we claim the promise found in Isaiah 55, 11 that says, Truly, when it is your words that go out, they shall not come back empty. And my prayer is that as the church, as the body of Christ, you would fill us up and that you would mold us and make us into the Jesus that the world needs. And if there are things about us, Lord, that need to be refined and put aside, that need to die and rise again, I pray that you would do that in us today, Lord, that I pray that there would, people would continually and constantly see less of us and more of you. And as we enter into this journey that we are uh, about to as a church, um, I'm, I'm asking, I'm begging you, Lord, that that's what happens in us, that you would refine us, that you would expose the toxins and the pollutants that um, we have exposed ourselves to because we live in a sinful world, that we might become more and more like you every day. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. And thank you for the privilege that we have to be family together, to be the church together. And may your Holy Spirit move in a mighty and profound way in the hearts of all the people that are here in this building today, the people that are listening online and watching on uh, the live stream. I pray that your Spirit would move in a mighty way to... Um, to make a difference, that we might become salt to a world that they might thirst to know you, that we may become light to a world that is very dark, that we might be hope in the midst of a world that questions whether there's any hope at all. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for just being you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before I get started this morning, I've got to give you a little disclaimer. I am not a doctor. Did anybody wonder about that? I am not a doctor. I just play one on television. So uh, what I'm about to say, especially in this, uh, the introduction part, you might want to take with a, a grain of salt, if you remember what M Megan said. If, if those of you that know me know that I am kind of a saltaholic. So, Megan, when I saw the, the, the popcorn, I'm trusting that that is extra salty popcorn that y'all gave us for pastor appreciation. I love salt. I can't get enough salt. Uh, I put salt on almost everything. I put salt on pizza. We, we go out to, you know, they usually don't put salt on the tables when you go out for pizza. We always ask for it. We, I put salt on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. No matter who's doing the cooking, I always presume that it needs more salt because, for me, I generally need it. Now, that being the case, and I don't hide it from anybody, I've had people that love me over the years say, Craig, you've got to stop that. It's going to give you hypertension or high blood pressure, and you're going to have a heart attack. But here's the deal. This is the truth. I, um, I actually have very low blood pressure, especially for an old man my age, Jesse. I know that's what you're thinking. And so... I've always kind of wondered about the disconnect because I eat so much salt, I wonder why then do I have such low blood pressure? So I went to a friend of mine who happens to be a doctor and I, I asked him, I said, I figured he'd give me the true scoop because you never know. I said, tell me wh really what's going on and this is how I explain. I think I might have shared this with some of you before, but this is what I learned about salt and hypertension. Um, it, is a, it is a fact that a, a, a lot of people um, 
that salt exacerbates uh, high blood pressure for people that are predisposed to it. Um, you know what it but it doesn't do that for everybody, apparently, all right? But this is what we can know about all of us who live in America, especially. We Americans um, consume far more salt than the human body really needs. And thus, the American Medical Association um, came up with a standard statement that basically says, salt is bad. So I've decided, being a saltaholic, I've decided to, to stand up and, and start a campaign to, to fix this egregious air by proclaiming that salt is good. Somebody say amen. Especially if you're a Christian. Somebody say amen to that. Because as we heard from Megan already this morning in the children's time, as Christians, we, the Bible teaches, that we are the salt of the earth, right? Now, the real question then becomes, well, what in the world does that mean? Ha-ha, that's a really good question. If you haven't asked that question, you should. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can this morning, but what I really want you to hear is that um, this scripture, this truth that proclaims that as Christians, as believers in Jesus, you are the salt of the earth, that that truth is really the foundation for the um, all-church study that we're going to be doing um, these next few weeks, the soul detox, because the truth that you are the salt of the earth is um, what is driving us or what uh, causes us to pursue the need to have our souls detoxed. So, um, this morning, if you have your Bibles, and I've noticed as I'm greeting people at the door, I've noticed a lot of you are bringing your Bibles. Good job, those of you that are bringing your Bibles. For those of you that aren't bringing your Bibles, I still love you. But if I just want, I really just, if you'll just kind of, you know, make me feel good. Bring your Bibles with you. I, I don't even know if you're going to open them up on Sunday morning, but I pray that you will. I want you to be able to test me, make sure that I'm staying with the Scripture. Uh, you may discover that when I quote a passage of Scripture, it's different than what you have in your translation, and that's a good thing because it kind of gives you a different nuance of maybe what's being said, and if I'm saying something wrong, I want you to call me on it, okay? So I want you to open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. If you don't have a Bible, by the way, let me know and I will get you a Bible. It won't cost you anything. It will be free. Let me know and I'll get you a Bible, all right? Matthew chapter 5. And as you're looking up Matthew chapter 5, let me give you a little context for what we're going to be uh, uh, looking at today, the truth that I believe that God wants to reveal to us. Matthew chapter 5 uh, contains one of the most beautiful um, passages of scripture in all the bible and it's called the beatitudes now if you're like me and you didn't grow up, grow up going to church you've never heard the word beatitudes but basically what it means is blessing in this passage of scripture jesus is preaching he's, it's part of the sermon on the mount and jesus is preaching to a group of people who don't feel very blessed they feel as though the the conditions of life, the circumstances of life are, are kind of stacked against them. And when they look at life and they look at all that's going on, they go, you know, I'm just looking for a little hope. So here, Jesus proclaims the, what has become known as the Beatitudes. And he talks about how people who are depressed are actually blessed. He talks about um, people who are introverted. You know, sometimes introverts feel like, you know, they kind of get overlooked. And uh, he says the, the meek are blessed. He says um, those that are persecuted for the faith, they are blessed. And he goes on and on. He talks about, about all these, these things that these people have been experiencing. And he talks about them as being blessed and in essence what he is saying is this your circumstance need not define who you are 
What he says, what he's basically saying to these people who feel hopeless is that I am your hope. I, as the creator of the universe, as the king of kings and the lord of lords, I want to invite you to be a part of my family. I love you. And if, if you would just receive this, this blessing that I'm offering to you, relationship, all those things that you feel have been stacked against you that have been keeping you from being happy and whole are going to stop being the things that are keeping you from being happy and whole. And they're gonna, you're going to instead be lifted up and encouraged and filled with life and hope because of me, Jesus said. I love that. But this is the, unique, the uniqueness about the message of Jesus. He says, I'm giving you these blessings. And he says, this is, what, this is the human condition. When human beings receive something of value, you know what we have a tendency to do? Right? Oh, I've got to cling on. I've got to hang on to this because this is so valuable. I've got to, I've got to make sure it doesn't get away from me. Jesus says, stop that. Because the, the, this, this hope, this blessing that I'm trying to bestow on you, um, if you cling to it, it will lose its value. If you cling to it and make it all yours, um, it will lose something. Because it is meant to be shared. This, this gift this hope, this blessing only becomes all that it is meant to be when you give it away. But if you cling to it and you make it, it's, it and it becomes all about you and it all becomes, it's, it's exclusively personal. Well, let me, I'll have Jesus explain to what happens when you do that. This is Matthew 5.13. If you've got your Bibles open, you'll see it. In Matthew 5.13, Jesus says, this is where we got what Megan was talking about earlier. In Matthew 5.13, it says, For you, it, those of you who have received the blessing of relationship with me, for you are the salt of the earth. For you are the salt of the earth. You, because of you, people will thirst for this they ought to thirst for this blessing that, I've, that you have received. You know, you, you have enough salt makes you thirsty. That's what you're supposed to be for the world. For you are the salt of the earth. But you know what happens when salt loses its flavor? It says salt that has lost its flavor is cast out and trampled under the feet of men. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically what he's trying to say is that... Um, as the salt of the earth, it's possible for you to become unsalty. And salt that isn't salty is just yucky, right? That's a big technical theological term, <laughs> yucky. In fact, he, Jesus said back in the day when salt would lose its flavor, they would just throw it out. They would just throw it out onto the ground pe for people to walk on because it has no value then. Jesus um, uses another analogy to try to help um, these people that he has invited into relationship, he's invited into the family. He says, he says you are the light of the world. So, and so don't hide your light under a bushel basket because why? The light is meant to be shared. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are meant to be blessed by his blessings. But these blessings are meant to be shared. And they are also meant to be nurtured and taken care of because apparently um, if you don't take care of, the salt, of your saltiness, you can lose your saltiness. So the question then becomes, well, what can we do, what do we need to do to make sure that we don't lose our saltiness? Because the moment we lose our saltiness, um, not only does it affect us, but it affects our testimony to the world. So what can we do? Well, 
that leads us to this book study that we're going to be um, in in the next few weeks called Soul Detox. There are all kinds of things, because we live in a lost and fallen world, a sinful world, there are all kinds of things, toxins or pollutants in the world that are threatening to steal your saltiness. What are these things? Well, I'm not going to go into all of them today, but I'll give you a little hint in, as to what some of them are. Some of them, one of the toxins is something as simple as words, words that we use against other people or words that are used against us. Words are powerful. Have you ever noticed that? Words can destroy a person's self-worth. Um, their relationships. Words can be toxic. Another one is, is what we allow into our brains. Did you know that your thought life can, can literally um, color everything that you perceive in life? That which you let into your head, into your brain, that which you think about can, will, not can, will color everything of life. It can be toxic or it can be purifying. And this is what you need to understand. The devil is an expert at using these things to destroy you. To destroy us. To destroy our saltiness and our testimony to the world. Don't let the devil win. And that's one of the reasons why um, we're entering into these next several weeks. As, as Tom was saying earlier, we have, as Christians, the Bible teaches, we really have three primary responsibilities. We've got lots more, but the three primary responsibilities, worship, kind of what we're doing today, not kind of, what we are doing today. We also have the, the purpose and the responsibility of growing in, as disciples, which is part of the, what we do when we do book studies, and then in service. So... The next few weeks, we try to do um, a couple of times every year, we do an all-church study so that everybody's on the same page. It's not always that way, but a couple of times a year, we do some of these all-church studies. And um, this time, we're doing this dull soul detox. And there's lots of ways to get involved. You've been hearing about it now for a while. Um, obviously, on Sunday mornings, I'll be, I'll be um, sharing with you what these toxins or pollutants are that... Um, can steal our, our saltiness. Um, we have the, our life groups. Many of our life groups are going to be um, doing this study. Uh, and there's the participant guides back there on the table, it, like Thomas said, every week. If, for those of you who want to go even deeper, there is a book by the same name called Soul Detox. Craig Grishel is the um, author of that if you want to go online and order that book because it'll give you even more depth and nuance to what this is all about. Um, and for those of you that are not part of a life group, um, I'm inviting you personally to come and, and be a part of the, of the study that we're going to be doing here on Wednesday night starting next week at 6.30. We have child care available, so don't not come because you think, Lord, am I going to do with the kids? Um, in fact, I've got my friend CJ is here with us today. She's going to be one of our child care providers during this, and uh, we wanted to kind of remove all of the obstacles that are often in the way of people um, experiencing the hope and the purity that comes from Christ. And I hope that you will all um, delve deeply into this because 2020, if you haven't noticed, has been pouring toxicity upon us almost every day, hasn't it? Threatening to... Um, steal our hope and our joy, our saltiness from a world that needs to know that um, there's living water offered to them that will quench that thirst. And his name is Jesus. The band is going to lead us in our far final song this morning and I want you to know if you've come here today and you need a prayer with your pastor, I would count it a blessing to pray with you. Maybe today is the day that you 
um, have decided to follow Jesus, to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. I'm going to be right over there. That door right over there is our prayer room. I'm going to be standing right over there after the, uh, as soon as the music starts. And if you want to pray to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, I would count it a privilege to pray that prayer with you. Maybe some of you today just need a prayer because you feel like you're, you're being overwhelmed with the toxicity of life and you're ready to, to start the process of, of p- being purified right now. I'd be privileged to pray that prayer with you right over there. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you just need to know someone cares. Well, I care. And I would love to pray with you and invite Jesus into whatever is going on in your life. That's one of the greatest and and most beautiful things that happens when we gather as the body of Christ to be reminded that we are not alone, that there is hope. And our hope is named Jesus. Amen? Amen. Jesse. Would you please stand and join us? Let's ask the Lord to fill us up and send us out so we can be the salt of the earth. God of justice. God of justice, Savior to all, came to rescue the weak and the poor, chose to serve and not be served, served you and me. Jesus, you have called us, freely we've received.
Send us up, fill us up, send us out, fill us up, send us out, Lord. Would you pray with me? Lord, we ask that you would fill us up right this minute with your promised Holy Spirit. Lord, those of us that know you, would you empower us and encourage us to go into a world that is lost, hurting, and broken, especially with all the things that have happened in 2020 with the pandemic, with the ratio, with the civil unrest, with the election. Lord, you know all of these things and how they're oppressing people and weighing them down. Help us to go out in the world and bring the gospel, which will lift people up again and to show your love. You've shown enough love to us. Now empower us to do the same for others. We pray and we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Have a great week. Told you you're not beautiful, you'll never be enough.